Now that we're getting close to the end of our first full year growing in these new Hugo Culture garden beds, it's time to document our experience. And I'd like to make a video just like this around this time every year from now on so we can see how these results change over time. I've got some new soil tests to compare and I'd like to talk about successes and failures that we've had in this first year growing in Hugo Culture raised garden beds. So first let's quickly review everything that was added to the soil in these beds over the last year. Immediately after I built them, I seeded them all with crimson clover and this grew through the fall, stayed quite green underneath the snow all winter and then came back very strong in the spring. So then once we started transplanting the veggies into the beds, the clover was used as a chop and drop mulch. And throughout the spring and summer, I continued mulching the beds with compost, grass clippings, and arborist wood chips. And that's it. I don't add any other special fertilizers or soil amendments to keep these plants going. If you've seen my other videos, you probably noticed that I rarely use any kind of store-bought products in the garden. I do use just a very small amount of liquid fertilizer to keep the plants healthy when we're starting them inside in light winter. But once they're out here in the garden, we keep them growing and thriving using only free local resources. Now let's take a look at the soil test from last year. This was from a little after I finished building the beds and we already had some clover growing in all of them. And the nutrient levels look pretty good across the board. You can see the little indicators, the shorthands of L for low, M for medium, and so on. And those are all based on the typical recommendations for each of those nutrients. And now let's compare that with the results from the new samples that I just sent in recently. And we can see that all of the nutrient levels have actually increased. And for the most part, that's a really good thing, although we do also want to uh, keep an eye on things like phosphorus. If that gets a lot higher, it can prevent plants from taking up iron and other nutrients. As we saw what happened in our other garden when we had very toxic phosphorus levels. But overall, it is great to see that even after we've grown all of these things in these beds through the whole spring and summer, somehow the soil is actually even more fertile than it was before. Just to be totally clear here, once again, this is our first year growing in these beds. And it is impossible for me to determine using these soil tests whether that increased fertility is coming from the wood that's decomposing underneath the soil or just from the top dressings of organic matter mulching and actually growing plants in the soil. I can't figure out exactly where those nutrients are coming from because it's just way too complex. Maybe somebody out there with some more expertise and uh, access to a science lab or something would be able to track that down. At the very least, I just want these videos to be a documentation of the beds changing over time so we can look back and get an idea of what's happening. For anybody interested in Hugo culture out there, you can watch these videos and see how it changes. It'll be really interesting to actually see where it goes from here. Now, water retention is supposed to be another great benefit of using a Hugo culture bed. It saves a lot on watering. You don't have to do it as much or even at all, according to many permaculture gardeners out there who swear that they've only watered their Hugo culture beds once in the beginning and never again since then. I wound up having to water these quite a bit. Maybe it's just because it's the first year. We did have a really long, hot, dry spell, and maybe I'm just used to doing that from my previous gardening experience. I like to water regularly but perhaps I didn't need to as much or really at all. But that means we can do an experiment next year where we can continue watering two of the beds and not water the third one at all for the entire growing season. That would be an excellent way to really test out the water retention. So as far as food production, I would say this has been one of our best years ever. I would even say that we've had more food come out of the garden this year than the last few years combined. But, like I said before, we did have a long, 
intensely hot period that completely stopped fruit production on a lot of plants and it stressed all the plants so much that they became a lot more susceptible to pests and disease problems. We had tons of white butterfly larvae on all the brassica plants, flea beetles on eggplants, cucumber beetles attacking and spreading disease to all of the melons, powdery mildew on the white Russian kale, and early blight and septoria on some of the tomatoes. And I'm sure some of these fungal diseases were even spread around a lot more because I was watering too much, so that's something else I'm going to have to watch out for next year. So at some point in the future, I do really want to dig down into the beds just to see how that wood is decomposing. It's only been a year though. I'm sure there's not a whole lot going on. Maybe after three years, it would be really cool to see that. But overall, I am so glad that I decided to try out this gardening method. It is fascinating to learn how it works and to actually see it in action. I think it really has great potential. I can't wait to see how this develops and I have a really good feeling that it's only going to get better every year from now on. So thank you very much for watching. You can check out my other Hugo Culture videos with this playlist here and I'll see you next time.